I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm coming from Sweden, very north, far north is Sweden, close to the Arctic Circle. I'm an architect and I'm going to talk about water. I'm going to talk about wastewater. I'm going to talk about pee and poop. <laughs> I, I am talking shit. I have a question for you. Do you usually pee in your drinking water? Yes or no? <laughs> Hands up the, the, those who are saying yes. <laughs> they are those who are saying no. What was the first thing you did this morning? You were peeing in drink, your drinking water. My first experience of toilet comes from a small island in the Baltic where my father was a sea pilot. And we were living there in an old fisherman's village. And these toilets is the first memory I have of toilets. They are small wooden houses laying in a row. We called it Sheet Street. <laughs> I, I remember the smelling uh, when we visit these houses. And I remember the flies, and also what's happening in the cold winters when we have to go cross-country skiing to the toilet. <laughs> That's not so easy. It's m perhaps much easier to do it in that way. These toilets were laying also rather close to the water well in the village. And it means that we every summer had what my parents called a summer disease, diarrhea. And this is what's happening all over the world today. We are polluting our groundwater. This is one of the most uh, fancy toilets. The, this is a high-tech toilet from Japan. I took the photo the first time I was in Japan. That's really a wonder. The, heat, uh, the seat is heated. You can adjust the heat in the seat. <laughs> there is a special button for uh, that flush your in the back. <laughs> There's another button that has a small arm going out and blowing warm air to make the drying job. <laughs> and when I went to Japan, some friends of me said, don't press these buttons. You can't know the, the characters of the Japanese language. And there is a special button called the ATR button. And I said, what's the ATR button? Automatic Tampax remover. And if you are a man, <laughs> if you are a man sitting in such a toilet, you are a real danger. <laughs> Today, 2.6 billion people do not have a clean and safe toilet. 2.6 billion. And what's really scaring me is this figure, the growth of the global population. The politicians of nowadays, they are talking about the carbon dioxide and the global warming. This is big problem and big issues. But if you uh, add uh, the growth of the global population to this a really big problem. When my father was born, oh, sorry. Yeah, this, yeah. That's another bottom, duh. <laughs> That's like the Japanese toilets. <laughs> when my father was born, about uh, nine, 1900, we were 1.7 billion people on the globe. At that time, 250 million people were living in cities. Year 2000, we were more than 6 billion people on the globe. Half of the population was living in cities. Half of the population was under 18 of age. And we, there's a lot of discussion what will happen in the incoming 50 years. But we can be up to 10, perhaps 11 million, billion people. At that time, 
75% of the global population will live in cities. 75% of the global population. It means we have to build cities for four and a half billion people during the next 50 years. Cities for 90 million per year. Cities for 250,000 people per day. Every second day, a new Bratislava. Every second day, a new Bratislava. How can we, at that time, organize the flow of air, clean air, uh, clean, uh, good energy ser uh, service for, for people? How can we handle the water and the garbage? How can we educate the young generation to uh, make something good from that? This is more than we have built in the whole history of man. This is the ordinary way how we solve the problem with wastewater. Everything what you flush down in a toilet ends up in nature. There is no miracles happening in the wastewater treatment plants. It's just a way to stop it for a while before it always go out uh, in, in, the, in nature. So we are eating the food, we go to the toilet, and then we flush it down. There is a leakage. In Sweden, 30% of the wastewater never end up in the wastewater treatment plants. I, I don't know the figures here. The renewable time for uh, wastewater pipes in Sweden is 200 years. And those who are thinking that 200 years is uh, the, the, the pipes will last for 200 years. Then we add, uh, oh, the bottoms. <laughs> then we add uh, polluted water from factories, hospitals, and so on. Then we add chem chemicals, and then we treat it, and then we let it go out in lakes, rivers, or in the ocean. It's polluted, it's heavy metals, and the sludge end up in a landfill, or people say that it's possible to use it for, for fertilizing the plants. But this is not the right. Urine and feces are the possibilities in the future. We need fertilizers for the farmers. Urine is totally clean. Feces contains of bacteria and viruses. Bacteria can easily be killed in a wastewater treatment plant, but viruses live three up to 24 months and can be encapsulated for many years. And it means that we have a real big problem when we mix everything and let it go to, uh, uh, to, to a wastewater treatment plant. And when you have a gastric flu, diarrhea, you are producing per day 10 billion viruses. If it was possible to kill 99% of them, still 100 million viruses will survive. And it's impossible in ordinary wastewater treatment plants to kill 99%. You need one or two viruses to get a stomach disease. During the human evolution, we have the per perfect solution. Feces one way, urine another way, and why shall we mix urine and feces? And that is so interesting that when we are talking about the nutrients from the body, 80% of these nutrients, they are in the urine. There is no bacteria in, in, uh, in, in the urine. So bring back the urine back to the farmers. And urine is the best fertilizer that you can get. 20% of the nutrients is in the feces. But there are a lot of pathogen, bacteria, and viruses. You can dry the feces and use it as energy. It's uh, as good as firewood. Or compost it uh, with earthworms. The earthworms eat up the bacteria and viruses. Or mix it with slaked lime the bacteria and viruses will die at the pH 12. So my proposal for you now, when you come home, pee in an empty bottle, 
Mix it with 10 parts of water and you have the best fertilizer. It's free. <laughs> you are sitting on a fortune. <laughs> so just by listening to me, you have saved a lot of money in the future. Can we use this idea to have other type of toilets in the future, other than this one? Yes, separating toilets is perhaps one of the solutions. You are eating the food, you go to the toilet, the urine go one way, and you can store it in containers in, in the ground, and uh, the uh, feces go to a container and you compost it, and you can use it, reuse it as nutrients. <coughs> and we, in fact, we have borrowed the, the nutrition from, from the farmers, from the earth, and we have to leave it back again. This is a complicated way of describing this. We take just the, the, the more, most important things. That's the toilet. The feces fell down by gravity down to the container, and then uh, you put it to in compost. Uh, you can do it once a month. It's uh, not smelling. It's very light, and it's dry. And the urine goes to a container, and you store it, and once a year you uh, put it to, uh, on the garden, and you get food. And then you have the gray water system, and the gray water can be used for irrigation. This is my own wooden dry separating toilet in my office. Uh, I have done it myself. There's where you are sitting. Small children, they can, my grandchildren can sit with a foot like this. The container is a stainless steel container, and I bring it out to the compost once a month. Then in our home, we have another type of toilets. It's a prefabricated toilet, and it's a more modern one. But this is not so easy to clean as the one I have made. Uh, last uh, October, uh, the Queen Mother of Bhutan visited our home. She went uh, to two places in, in Europe to, for a food market in Italy, and then she wanted to come up and see how we are living. I've been working in, in Bhutan, and I met her there. And she uh, stayed in our home for a couple of days. And when she came back to Bhutan, she had a meeting with the Prime Minister, and they decided to... Uh, uh, this toilet system should be the one uh, in, in the, uh, in the uh, remote areas in Bhutan. So now we are going back uh, to Bhutan in October again to introduce these technologies. They can build it uh, in, in the villages by local material. And I already introduced this technology in Colombia. This is a wooden toilet and uh, the people up in the Andes can make themselves, and they save uh, the rivers, and they can use the fertilizer for the farming. This is the next step. This is the water flushing uh, separating toilet. There we have a separator, and the feces go down to a compost, and earthworms take care of it. The, to uh, to uh, the urine goes from the toilet to a tank, and then we use it in the same way. This is a Lagerberg school in Timrå in Sweden. They have water flushing separating toilets with compost in the cellar. And this is a school. The whole school is a part of the green uh, education for the children. We have uh, many, many different systems in the school. And this is the way how we use it. You have the toilets and the compost in the basement. And the urine go out to a tank outside the building and then they mix it with 10 parts of water, and they use it as uh, fertilizer on the golf course. This is how it looked like. That's a wall hand <coughs> uh, separating toilet. You have the wall in between, and the feces go down there, and the urine down there. And there's the separator, and here is the compost. And there's a detail of it. It's a lot of earthworms there. 
And this is what we are now doing in homes in Sweden, but also in blocks of flat and high-raised buildings. We have uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, separating toilets, and uh, we handle it in the way I mentioned <coughs> earlier. But we are also using the drains uh, in, in uh, the buildings as a part of the ventilation. So we have what we call termite ventilation. Fresh air intakes through the soil. We cool the air in in the summer and we preheat it in the winter. And then the drains are used as uh, ven ventilation in combination with this. And then we can get back the energy from the air, from the humidity and from the, uh, fr from the water. This is the most uh, advanced system. That's the next generation of wastewater treatment. This is the split box technology. Uh, all kind of uh, installations in the house can be connected to the split box. And then we got cleaned water. It's almost clean. You can use it for flushing the toilets. You can use it for irrigation. You can let it go to the stormwater system. Or you can also uh, use it for close farming like this. The, we got fertilizer, dry fertilizer. We get energy pellets that can be a part of the energy system. And the air will be, by heat pump technology, accumulated and used for preheating the termite ventilation system. So this is what we are now introducing on the market. And this is how it looked like. This can be used in retrofitting of old buildings, but also in new buildings. Every person produces per year six kilos of nitrogen, one kilo of phosphorus, one kilo of potassium. And to farm on 500 square meter farmland, you need the same amount. So you are self-sufficient with nutrients, and then you can get 75% of your food. My fin final story, this is from a school in, in Los Angeles. I was... Uh, given the opportunity to retrofit an old school. And uh, as an introduction for that, I gave a lecture for the teachers, the parents, and the children. I, I was talking about the flow of everything through a building. And when I was talking about the flow of water, I was talking about pee and poo. And they were laughing. They fell off their chairs, the children. For in the United States, we are ne they are never talking about toilets or pee and poo. So uh, this funny man from Sweden, he make a success by talking about uh, pee and poop. And I also told them about uh, pee in a bottle and mix it with 10 parts of water. Three months later, I went back to the school, met a, a father and his son. And the father asked uh, the son, do you recognize that man? And he said, he is the pee and poop man. <laughs> So, think out of the box, start rethinking, and it's urgent. Close the loops and be happy. Live in balance with nature. Make more good examples. Thank you.